This is the decimated model that I exported from ZBrush. This is a model I exported from Pixel CNC. This is a model I created using the height map in Blender. This is the higher subdivided model. And this is the optimized version of that that I created in MeshLab. This is another model that I created in Blender, but I used a subdivision of times three instead of times four. So the times four model was 400 megabytes and the times three model is 100 megabytes. And then this is the optimized model from MeshLab, which gets down to about 40 something megabytes. So I'm going to go to my properties panel. I'm in the tool tab and then I'm going to create a sculpting plane, which is quite handy because it just sets up um, a plane with a multi-res modifier on. I'm going to subdivide that again. So it's subdivided by three. And then I'm going to add a displace modifier, which you can search for. Uh, I'm going to click new, which tells it I want to use a texture. I'm going to set that to UV. And then I'm going to go to the texture properties and open a height map. So I've got quite a few height maps here. These are some tests from earlier. Um, the first test I did was just exporting a height map from Blender. It's called Height Baker and it's by Kushiro. You can actually set up the same effect in the compositing tab if um, you don't want to use an add-on. 
I think I have got a video where I've done that and there's also a Blender file with that setup that you can download off of my blog. Either using Height Baker or the a depth pass from the compositing tab, um, you can get a height map that looks a bit like uh, this one. So we want to alter the, the height of that because it's a bit like a weird mountain cake at the moment. Um, so we just want to decrease the strength. If I set it to about 3 or 2 it should look better. I'm going to put it to 2. So that's how to create the 3D geometry from this. So then you would go to File, Export and any object you want, but for 3D printing you might want to do an STL, although I think they use OBJ as well. And then you make sure you've got Include Selection only, whatever you do, otherwise it will export the whole scene in Blender and also make sure apply modifiers is ticked. So another height map texture I made was I used a normal map render and then I converted it into a height map with, with um, a program called Pixplant 5. So that created this one, I added the black background using a photo editing tool. I've got Affinity Photo um, and I used this flat um, render pass with a transparent background to help create the transparency map um, to make that a little bit easier. So this height map doesn't work quite as well for these purposes. We've got a little bit, it's a bit stranger looking, but it is a conversion from um, a normal map so it's not really as accurate as it should be. That method would work okay for doing um, just alphas for sculpting and, and things. But to create real geometry, it's probably not the best way. I also created a height map in Pixel CNC. What I did was I imported the STL from ZBrush as an object, a layer object um, in that program, and then I turned that into a raster image layer in Pixel CNC and then I exported that as a height map PNG from that program. And the result is is this one. Which is very similar to the first one from Blender. So using the uh, the add-on I talked about or the compositing tab. In fact I think the one that I created using Blender is slightly nicer. I would say for these purposes there's not much point making it more complicated than you need to. So in conclusion I would say the height map method from Blender creates a nice enough result for creating displaced geometry as well. So there's no need to get any more complicated than that really. Thanks for watching. Bye now.